Hey, what separates the contractors and construction business owners who are generating millions per year in profit from those who struggle to hit the million dollar mark? We believe that there's tips, hacks, and secrets that prove to be common denominators amongst the pros. That's what this guide is all about. We've spoken to the most successful construction business owners we know in order to pick their brains and get the secret sauce. And listen, a quick note before we start, to protect the identity of each contractor, we won't use any footage from their company. Any footage or advice in this video is strictly, um, hypothetical. And oh yeah, this video is sponsored by HeavyApe.com. Stop throwing away profits. When it comes to securing profits in a construction business, there's no one better to talk to than a seasoned veteran. In this case, we spoke with our good buddy, Andrew. He's managed general contracting businesses, and he's done estimating for decades. And as Andrew puts it, running a successful construction business doesn't require a genius. Most guys I know, myself included, barely got through high school. Running a construction business is about suiting up and showing up every day and doing the job right. Many of the factors that made me successful over the years really just contribute to not losing profits. Here's a list of tips we put together with Andrew's help for securing profit. Having a poor bidding process is a sure way to lose profits. According to Andrew, a highly experienced estimator, bidding is an art form that must be mastered, if not by you, then by someone on your team. Overbidding and underbidding will both cost you in the end, and not just money, but something even more precious, time. Be reasonable when it comes to establishing your profit goals. They shouldn't be too high or too low. There is a sweet spot, and it's your responsibility to find it. And sometimes this can take time, so be willing to be patient. And you must understand and monitor overhead cost. When it comes to expenses required to run your construction business like rent, office, staff, insurance, you gotta be vigilant and monitor them. We've noticed the savvy contractors like Andrew, they're not only monitoring these costs, but they're always trying to renegotiate them. Over time, that saved capital really adds up. And when it comes to bad employees, well, Andrew puts it bluntly, cut the loose slack. It doesn't matter if it's your brother-in-law or your best friend. If you're dragging around a worker or workers who are dragging you down and not pulling their weight, they're gonna sink the ship. And it's crucial that you're managing inventory as efficiently as possible. The cost of lost tools, worn out materials, broken equipment, it really adds up over time. But what do you do about it? Well, if you're a pro like Andrew, you use inventory management software, and that's always managed by someone in the office, like an administrative assistant. And what about the law? Andrew says, not taking construction law seriously or ignoring it altogether is easily one of the biggest mistakes I see contractors make. I understand they're swamped with serious tasks and problems, but they learn real quick what a bigger problem a legal issue is when a client or employee sues them. What can you do about it? We recommend getting close with an attorney who understands and knows construction law so you can ask questions whenever they arise. Thanks, Andrew. Lead generation hacks. Getting clever with lead generation, dude, it's a sure way to scale big and fast. Billy T, that's a painter who owns one of the most successful painting businesses up in New England, shared some of his top hacks for finding and securing potential clients. According to Billy, most contractors make the mistake of thinking lead generation is hiring some agency or using a software to help you find clients. No, 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 no. I wish it was that easy, but the good news is contractors, even the small fish, 
you can compete and even outperform the big fish out there because most contractors don't understand that lead generation is about identifying and cultivating potential customers. Now let's talk more about cultivating. He says cultivating is not throwing ads and promotions at the wall to see what sticks. It means you track, you clean, and do a lot of follow-up. So we've worked with Billy to better understand cultivation and lead generation. Listen, automate as much as you can. Ideally, you want to be acquiring and cultivating leads while you're asleep. How you achieve that depends on your style, but Billy recommends you hire a freelancer like on Upwork.com and pay a really affordable rate. And they can spend every day building prospect lists and contacting them for you on your behalf. Cold emails. This one's huge. A skill that Billy and other good contractors have mastered for acquiring leads. In our opinion, it's the most efficient form of automated lead generation. Just get a program like quickmail.io and you can send 50 emails a day to potential customers. And when they respond, you can respond by email or phone to close the deal. And if you want to learn more about cold emailing, check out the heavyape.com course. It's down in the description below. And don't underestimate the power of content. It's effective, cheap, and particularly in the construction industry, it lasts for years before it loses luster. Content can be something simple, like a blog article. You can write one. It says like 10 tips for hiring a painter for your house. It, that's what Billy used, and he successfully acquires new clients from it. He mentioned that content marketing is great because it not only gets the attention of the prospect, but it instantly builds trust as well. If you don't fully understand your target audience, you're going to get smoked. Who are you selling your services to and why? In Billy's case, he targets homeowners in the New England area with an average home value of three hundred to 700000 And you have to follow up. This is where most contractors just fall flat on their face when prospecting. Rarely is a new customer closed after speaking to them just one time. According to Billy, it takes at least two to three times before they're even thinking about pulling the trigger. And tracking is essential. Look, what good is it to spend all that time and money chasing prospects if you don't measure what works and what doesn't? And don't forget about social media. It's 2022. Billy put it perfectly. If you're too lazy to handle it yourself or you don't like it, then hire a freelancer to grow your profiles and let them work on it each and every day. No excuses. Thanks, Billy. Now, what about leveraging the failure of a shady contractor? You know, come on, man, let's face it. If you're a contractor, you're well aware of all the shady and scams out there. Scammy contractors, they're everywhere. But unfortunately, we can't blame the client for being paranoid. And maybe it even gets a little annoying for you to deal with collateral damage from these con men who were there before you. So what do you do about it? Let's see what Kevin had to say. Leverage it. And he goes on. Use these swindlers to your advantage. Heck, lean into it right off the bat. Let the client understand you know about all the tricks and all the nonsense in the book. They'll respect you for that, believe me. And later on in the conversation, Kevin made another really good point. Other than doing a kick-ass job, there's no better way to get repeat business from a client than being as transparent as possible. So, what can you point out? What can you leverage to reassure the client they should be working with you, not the competitor? Cost. It's not uncommon to accrue extra cost during a job. Whether it's extra labor or material, never, never sneak it into the invoice without telling the client. Always notify them the moment any extra cost comes up. Not an hour later, not a day later. Right then. Knowledge. With some exceptions, it's likely you know a lot more about the job you're doing than the client. Don't abuse that power. 
It should be obvious, but we, and Kevin, see this all the time with shady contractors. And quality. It's likely you have a better understanding of quality or what's good or bad work than the client. If you haven't figured this out already, if you let shoddy work slide, it's inevitable that a contractor that follows your work in the future is going to point it out. And there goes the chance of being rehired by that client. Disputes. Yeah, you're going to have disagreements with clients. It happens. It's inevitable. But this is where it's crucial. You're on point, on your best behavior. Is the customer always right? We ask contractors all the time, and we almost always get the same answer. Yes. Contracts. As Kevin puts it, contracts can be a pain in the butt. We couldn't have put it better, <laughs> but contracts can be confusing, ambiguous, and tedious. And for that reason, we recommend you hold your client's hand through the contract process. It's an excellent way to earn the trust of the client for a lifetime. The list of ways which you can outperform your competition, it goes on and on and on. But remember, leverage their failures and use them to your advantage. Thanks, Kevin. Getting paid right. Do you get paid on time? Probably not, but look, you're not alone. But what can you do about it? Well, should you threaten to stop the job if they don't pay? No, that just makes the client mad. It wants someone to call a competitor and you don't want that. Let's talk to Chip, the owner and operator of a landscape business. Let's see what he had to say. Penalties and incentives. Chip says, personally, I have never penalized a client for paying late and I never will. Why? Because it's simple. I don't want to piss off the client. I want them to hire me in the future, but I could see how some other contractors feel different. We agree with Chip, but what about incentives? Ah, here's where Chip says, I love incentivizing. I'll even lower the price if they pay early. But if you don't want to go that far, you can always think of other clever ideas like offering a discount on the next project. Accurate estimates. How about making estimates that are as accurate as possible? We know how it is. Estimates that are too high make you lose the job and estimates that are too low, that leads to serious headaches. So you want to find the sweet spot, said Chip. Remember, the more expenses that a client has to approve, the more delay there most likely will be. And delays mean, you guessed it, delayed payment. Accurate job costing. Thorough review of cost, labor, and materials. During the project, it's crucial. Changes or delays in project costs don't help the client pay faster. In fact, they'll probably use that as an excuse to ignore your invoice, period. So what can you do about it? Here's what Chip says. There's plenty of software and tools out there like Excel spreadsheets to help with job costing, including material cost spreadsheets, automated time tracking for labor and material cost. And he goes on, always cost a job based on what you need to make, not based on what you think you should make. Thanks, Chip. Do you need more tips, hacks, and secrets for running a successful construction business? Check out heavyape.com. There's a link down in the description, and you can get their free kits for marketing, as well as launching your very own construction business.